Good morning and welcome to A Finch's Nest Podcast. This is episode number 12. And today is New Year's Eve 2020. And I think we can all say that we will be very happy to see the end of 2020. Uh, 2020 has been a year, that's for sure. So um, my name is Heather and um, I live in Southern Ontario and I have not recorded a podcast for months. Uh, Life was crazy this year. So anyways, here I am on New Year's Eve hoping to catch up with you and to give you some life updates, but also lots of knitting. Well, maybe not lots considering how long it's been since I podcast. I really have not gotten a lot of knitting done this year, but um, hoping 2021 is going to bring more knitting time and uh, a little less chaos in life. (laughs) So I'll talk more about life stuff near the end, but um, yeah, I just wanted to get a podcast out and I know people have been asking and Wondering if I'm okay. Yes, I'm fine. I just had a crazy year. So, um, yeah, I'll update you on that at the end. So we'll get into some knitting projects and, um, yeah, we'll talk about all the yarny goodness. So, um, some of these items I've had finished for a long time because I haven't podcast for so long and I had them sitting in my cupboard waiting to podcast and finally the day has come. So, um, here we are, we can talk about them. So the first one is, um, the, oh, and I should tell you that if you want to find me on, um, Instagram, you can find me at a Finch's Nest and that's where I'm most active. And even there, I haven't been very active this year, but I'm hoping that will change soon too. So um, yeah, I'll put in my um, Instagram address below so you can find me there if you want to follow along. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so the first project that I finished was the Solosis sweater by Jennifer Steingast. So I was lucky enough to be a test knitter for this. And um, this is not the first Jennifer Steingast pattern I've knit and her patterns I would highly recommend. She's very good at writing patterns. They're very clear. They turn out beautifully and I don't think you'll be disappointed. So anyways, I was happy to test knit for her. And um, here is my finished object. So I decided to do uh, a short sleeve version of this sweater. Look how long it's been folded. (laughs) I creased right down the middle now. Okay. Uh, I decided to do short sleeves for two reasons. One was I was trying to knit from my stash and I had this yarn that I bought years and years ago and never used it. And I really liked the color and it was kind of outside of my normal um, color range that I choose. So I thought it would be a good one uh, to use up and I didn't have enough or I didn't think I would have enough to do long sleeves. But I also think this will be really nice uh, over top of a long sleeve top in the winter just to keep keep you warm but the sleeves aren't getting in the way so anyways it has this beautiful pattern on it and it just turned out really really nice and I'm very happy with the end result so now I need to uh, I think reblock this <laughs> to get this out <laughs> and get wearing this because now it's chilly and I think this would be perfect layering piece so anyway, so that's the Solosa sweater by Jennifer Steingas. And the yarn I used was this, which I, like I said, had in my stash for years. I still remember somebody had given me a gift card to the yarn store years ago. And this is what I bought with it. And then I never ended up making the thing that I bought for. So anyways, it's the Barocco Vintage DK. And the color is 2194. And then the contrast, I used uh, this yarn, which is also a Barocco and it's um, an alpaca. And I don't have the tags or anything. I just happened to have this leftover uh, ball that someone had given me. And so I thought it was kind of a perfect combination of the two colors. I thought they looked really nice together. So 
yeah, so that's what I used for that, and I'm really happy with it. I, I was unsure of how I would feel about the vintage knit up, um, because I really do prefer 100% wool yarns, but I actually really like it. Now, I haven't worn it, so I don't know if it feels, you know, sometimes yarns with acrylic feel kind of sweaty, <laughs> make you feel sweaty when you're wearing them. So I don't know if it'll be like that, but I hope not. I think it's it feels really nice, so I'm hoping that it's something I'll get a lot of use out of, and I will enjoy that. So, and I really enjoyed doing that test knit. That was fun. So, um, yeah, so that was the first finished object. Um, the only modification I made on that sweater was I did knit it two inches longer than the pattern called for. Um, I just wanted something a little bit longer. And so that was the only modification I had made on that. Um, I also knit these socks since we last podcast. Um, these are just a vanilla sock, my standard 64 stitches that I do. Um, I usually do, um, what is it? An inch and a half of ribbing. I can't even remember. I just do it all the time. An inch and a half of ribbing and then I knit to six inches and then I start my heel flap and guess it. And then um, yeah, just a standard toe and get to know the toe. So this is the Estelle yarns. They have, um, I don't have the tag anymore. They have these sets where you get two little balls of yarn to make sock twins <laughs> and so that's what this was so um yeah what's it called the Estelle yarn sock twins and it was the multicolor. so yeah this would have if i had knit the whole ball this would have turned now into like a navy blue but i didn't get through the whole ball so anyways i really like them and They've been sitting on these sock blockers for months. <laughs> so I need to get them off of here and onto my feet. Mm. So I'm happy with those. It's always nice to have some new socks. I was finding recently that a lot of my socks are wearing a little thin on the bottom. So I really need to have some new socks in my collection. So here's a pair. And I have a couple others that I've been working on as well. So that's good. I'm like happy about that. Um, I have done some knitting for my granddaughter, so for those of you who don't know and who haven't watched before, I have a little granddaughter and she's the sweetest thing in the world. <laughs> so she's now 11 months already, I can't believe it, the end of January, she'll be a year old. So hard to believe, but um, anyways, I knit her a few sweaters for Christmas and so I've given them to her already, but I have some photos of them so I will insert them as I'm talking about them so you can see how they turned out and I'm actually really happy with all of them and um, she looks adorable in them. so yeah it, that was a great project to do and uh, I look forward to knitting her more so the first one that I knit for her and I have yarn rolling all over the floor now uh, the first one I knit was from this book, The Strange Brew book by Tin Can Knits, and it was the compass sweater. And if you're not familiar with Tin Can Knits, which I'm sure you are, um, they have great patterns, and everything's just falling everywhere. <laughs> um, they have great patterns, and they go from like a newborn size up to like a men's I don't know, four extra large or something. Yeah, men's four extra large in the same pattern. So this compass sweater, my daughter really liked how it turned out. And uh, I said, well, I can make her one every year for the rest of her life because <laughs> the pattern goes all the way up. So um, yeah, so those are great patterns. And it was well written, charts are easy to follow, and it turned out super cute. So the yarn I had used for it was this sock yarn that I had in my stash. And I have discovered that in 2020 during COVID, it's really important to have a stash because I can knit whatever I need to knit and I have yarn in the stash to do it. So I'm happy for my stash this year. So these are the colors that I use. This is the main color 
And this is the online super sock. And this is color number 37. And then the contrast is the same yarn, but color number 23. It's a nice creamy color. So yeah, so that knit up really nice. The finished object's really cute and I'll insert a picture here. You can see how it looks and how it turned out and I'm really happy with it and I'll definitely be using that pattern again and many other patterns in that book because I really like it and I do really love knitting color work I know it's not for everybody but um, for me I would rather do color work than uh, cables and lace I think so it's just just what I enjoy so the next sweater that I knit for her was This sweater, the Eglantine sweater, I don't know <laughs> how to say that. And this is by OGE Knitwear Designs. And I better not show you the bottom there. This is the pattern here. I just found this on Ravelry. I thought it was really cute. A little pullover and had that little feminine touch to it. So the yarn that I used for that was this Estelle Superwash Merino DK. Now I had never used this yarn before and I guess it was back in the summer maybe. I was in um, a yarn store and the lady in the store had introduced me to this yarn. So she had recommended it for baby knits because it is a superwash and it's really, really soft. It is really soft so I tried it and I love this yarn this was beautiful to knit with it turned out so nice it's so squishy and soft there's no you know itchy wool feel to it at all it's just absolutely gorgeous yarn so I will definitely be using this again so when I bought the yarn I wasn't sure exactly what pattern I was going to use so I ended up with a ball and a half left and this color looks really really good on the baby so I think I'm gonna call the store where I purchased this and see if they have any more in the same dye lot and uh, get some more to make her another sweater for maybe next winter because this is definitely her color and maybe next time make like a cardigan or something instead of another pullover with it but I would highly recommend this yarn um, these are let me see um, it's 100% merino and you get 125 meters for these 50 gram balls so yeah and the price point is pretty good on these especially for how nice this yarn is so I would definitely highly recommend this yarn if you can get your hands on it so that's Estelle Superwash Merino DK So that was her second sweater. And the third sweater was the antler sweater, again by Tin Can Knits. I had knit this sweater before for myself, but it was definitely more fun to knit a little tiny one. But in the end, the sweater didn't fit her. I knit it too small, and so now I'm going to re-knit it. And we actually have my nephew and his wife are expecting a baby um, in the spring, so I think we'll um, save the one that's too small <laughs> and give it to that baby. So that's okay. There's always babies around that can use a nice warm sweater, so it's okay. And it was partly my fault because I started a long time ago and then decided to save it for Christmas instead of just giving it to her, which in hindsight I should have done because then she could have worn it. But anyways, it's fine. I'm going to start another one. So yesterday I went sash diving and found some more yarn to make this again. So I will make it uh, the next time in the one to two year size. And yeah, it was fine in the sleeves, but um, not in her belly. <laughs> 
Uh, and it was a little short in the length. And she's not a chubby baby at all. So I think this sweater maybe fits slimmer. So um, I'll definitely do the one to two year size and then hopefully it'll fit her perfectly. And the yarn I used for that is the Red Heart Chic Sheep yarn. Now I'm going to give you my honest feedback on this yarn. <laughs> this yarn I picked up at Michael's on a clearance and it was really, really affordable. So I bought a whole bunch of this color and I bought some pink and some red. It is 100% um, wool and it's very soft. However, <laughs> there are so many knots in this yarn terrible and I remember when I was knitting her little antler sweater there would be times where there would be like a knot and then like a couple minutes later another knot and then another knot it was terrible 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 so I have more of this yarn because I had bought it on a sale but I will not purchase this yarn again so and that's my honest feedback so um I would not recommend this, especially when you can buy yarn like this. <laughs> this has no knots. This has tons of knots. So, and with this, I found it really frustrating because the knots, you know, when you get to one, then you have to like rip back a bit because you can't just knit it right in. And yeah, it's just very frustrating. So I won't be buying more of this. And actually, I don't even think they make this anymore. And maybe that's why. <laughs> But, and that's probably why it was so cheap, but um, anyways, it did make a nice finished sweater and it's nice and soft, but the knots were really irritating. So I won't be purchasing this again. But anyways, um, that's the antler sweater. So again, I'll insert a photo so you can see how it turned out. Yeah, now I get to knit it again, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> um, that was totally my fault anyways, so I should have knit it bigger in the first place, I guess, but yeah, it just seems like they go from newborn to like a year old so quickly, and I guess I didn't think she was that big, <laughs> but she was. <laughs> so anyways, let me see what else I wanted to tell you. I had to make notes today because it's been so long since uh, I talked to you. So yeah, so for those three sweaters, I'll just insert photos and uh, soon I'll have to start making her some more sweaters and start thinking about sweaters for spring. So um, I did knit myself another pair of socks. I actually have three new pairs of socks. It's funny because these things have been kind of sitting for so long, I kind of forgot about them. <laughs> so. Yep, so these socks were knit in Lizzie Ann yarns and one of her sock sets. So these are the socks and I think they're so pretty. Yeah, this color, I've knit a lot of this color this year because my Solosa sweater and then the sweater for the baby and then these. So I guess I'm on a bit of a turquoise kick right now. Anyways, this is Lizzie Ann Yarns, and the leftover is the ball that went rolling across the floor. Um, it was a sock set, and the main color is called Beach Glass, and the mini is called Tidal Wave. So, gorgeous colors. I really like their yarns. They seem to like the same colors that I like. So I often gravitate towards their yarns. If I go to a show or anything, um, I almost always purchase something from them because their colors are very, very much my liking. Just soft, soft and pretty. And they do tend to do a lot of pinks and purples, which are definitely my colors. So uh, yeah, I do really like their yarn. And these are really soft. And I think this was a 75-25 base yeah but very very soft so again this is just my standard uh, vanilla sock which 
I've discovered is my favorite. <laughs> I like the look of patterned socks, but I think I just really like knitting a plain sock. Very relaxing. So anyways, I'm really happy with how these turned out and can't wait to wear these. So I'll get those in my sock basket right away so I can uh, start wearing them. So yeah, that's another knit. Oh, stuff is falling everywhere. <laughs> I'm out of practice on this. Um, my last pair of socks, I actually just finished the other day. So these ones are kind of, you know, I don't know if I would say sentimental, but they have some special meaning behind them. So for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, I made a big <laughs> move this year. And um, I'm going to talk more about that in at the end in life stuff. But um, it was very stressful. <laughs> Very stressful. Um, yeah, probably one of the hardest things, yeah, or definitely the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Um, anyways, it was really difficult. And in September, I turned 50. And of course, with COVID, we couldn't have any big party or anything. But my mom ended up just having myself and my kids over to her place. And she had this really nice catered dinner. and. It was really nice. Anyways, at the party, my daughter um, gave me a gift card to the local yarn store in the new city that I now live in. So that was kind of fun because she searched out where the yarn store was for me before I moved here. And um, so anyways, not long after, I think it was maybe a week or two after we moved, I you know when you move you're just so sick and tired of looking at boxes <laughs> and I just needed to get out of the house for a bit so I thought you know what I'm gonna take that gift card and I'm gonna go check out this yarn store so anyways I went and checked it out and the owner was super nice and they have a nice selection of yarns and some yarns that I had never tried before and so anyways I did end up buying a couple skeins of yarn which I just realized I didn't bring the other ones to show you, but anyways, you'll see them soon enough, I guess. Um, so this yarn is yarn that I bought with the gift card in my new city after a very stressful <laughs> few months. So I call these my I moved socks. So they're just special because the yarn is from, the yarn is a yarn I never tried before. I absolutely love the way it knit up and you know this was my first knitting project in my new house so this is how they turned out and I think they are so nice this feels like a really nice sock yarn it feels maybe a little bit more wooly than a lot of them um, maybe it doesn't feel as processed or something. I don't know. They just are really nice, <laughs> really nice. So I'm really happy with how these turned out. And I, I knit them fairly quickly considering everything that's been going on. But um, I am so excited to wear these socks. And I am excited to go back to the yarn store and buy more of this yarn in different colorways because it is nice. So the yarn is called Superba Vintage 4-ply. So this comes in 100 gram, I don't know what these are called, balls, I guess. Um, and this is how much I have left from that pair of socks. So there's a lot, I don't know what the yardage on here is, 420 meters. So I feel like there's really a lot left. So what I was thinking of doing in the future, not right now, is pulling out one of the colors, like maybe the turquoise, or there's like a purple color in there. It's looking more rust, I think, in the light here, but there is some purple. And I'm um, doing like a plain colored sock and using this as the heels and cuffs and toes. And I could also knit a pair of socks for Annie for the leftovers, which I did do with the leftovers from these, which I forgot to tell you about. I did knit a little pair of socks for Annie out of this yarn. 
So I'll have to insert a photo of those as well. But they were really cute. So um, yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should use some of this yarn leftovers to knit something for her as well because there's definitely enough there to do her a pair of socks and then the cuff and heels and toes on another pair. So for these I just did the cast on in the gray and then the heel and the toe. I don't often do the cuff heel and toe but I do like that little bit at the top. So anyways I'm happy with how these turned out and the gray is just the Patton's Croy sock in the gentry gray this is a yarn that i just keep on hand all the time and it's perfect for heels and toes and i keep this color and the cream and there's kind of a beigey color i can't remember what it's called. oh flax it's called and i always have a ball on hand just for for um heels and toes and it wears really well the patents cry so i'm anxious to see how these ones wear and I'm anxious to go back to the store because they did have a few colors that I really liked and I couldn't decide which one. And this one was a little bit outside of my normal uh, color ranges. So that's why I ended up going with it. But um, yeah, I'm dying to go back there. <laughs> but we're currently in lockdown, so I won't be going back there anytime soon. But uh, yeah, so I'm really happy with those and anxious to wear those. Something else I made, this was before we moved even, um, but I did make myself a new little tote bag. And I don't know if I showed this on the last podcast or not. I don't think I did. But I did make this little tote bag, which I love. <laughs> and it's not showing up the right color. It's more, it's looking rust. Everything is looking rust in this light. It's actually like a uh, plummy, plummy color. But yeah, it's really not showing up the right color. Anyways, and then I put in this cute floral lining. Let me take this out. There. And there's a pocket in there, you can see. Two pockets. And then I just put like a magnetic closure on it instead of a zipper, because I don't like zippers when there's yarn involved. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm really happy with this. It's nice and sturdy. And I love the color and I love the floral fabric. So yeah, right now I have a project for Annie in here. And yeah, so this is my favorite new tote bag. <laughs> so I haven't done hardly any sewing in months. So um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that my new sewing room is finally set up. I'm actually in it right now. And so I'm looking forward to getting some sewing done in the next few months. I actually am in the middle of a project right now that I'm really excited about, but I can't share it because it's a surprise for somebody. So um, yeah, I'll show it to you when I can. I have lots of sewing plans. I did get some really nice uh, fabric as a Christmas gift. Maybe I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I didn't bring it to show you, but I, I can grab it here. Um, yeah, so I have some really fun, exciting projects <laughs> that I'm hoping to get to this year. So, And I think I will. I think I'm gonna have more time for things I enjoy this year, thankfully. <laughs> so, um, so what am I working on? So I have, I did start a crochet blanket now, I don't know if I talked about this on the last podcast either. I don't remember. And I was going to watch it back to see what I talked about, but I thought I'd forget it. <laughs> I don't have time for that. So I have this basket and I keep my blanket in there and all my uh, scraps. So, or some, they're not all scraps, but there's one, this ball that I'm using as well. But lots of little bits left from other projects or mini skeins that people have given me and so I just keep them in here and I have my crochet hook in here and I have this adorable thing I have to show you I have a pair of scissors in here everything I need to work on my blanket but this I have to show you I've had this for years so online I had met this 
really sweet girl from Norway. And she um, does whittling. So she made this little gnome. But his head comes off. So inside, I keep my darning needle. So I have everything I need for my project. See his little, it's hard to show you, it's so small. His little head. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's the perfect little spot to keep a darning needle and a treasured gift from a friend. Oh, I really love it. It's really cute. So yeah, I just keep everything in my basket so that when I feel like working on it, I can work on it and everything's there. I don't need to go looking for anything. So this, this is how far I've gotten. So it's quite wide. I can't even remember how many stitches. I think it's when I chained the beginning, I think it was like 308 maybe. So I started sewing in the ends as you can see, <laughs> I haven't sewn in any for a while, but I did do some, so that's good. But I'm really happy with how this is looking. The light is not good, I'm realizing. It's much prettier than it's looking there. But anyways, um, I'm excited about this. I think it's gonna be a nice blanket when it's finished. Um, it's not something I necessarily gravitate very to very often. I definitely prefer my knitting, but it's nice to have it on the needle or hook, I guess. And um, yeah, it's just nice for something different sometimes. I don't really have any goals of like, this is gonna be done by a certain time. It's just one of those things I pick up when I feel like it and yeah. I did find I worked on it a lot in the summer because I would just take the basket and go sit outside for a while. So maybe when summer comes back, I'll work on it more. But right now I'm, right now I just want to sew in it all the time, <laughs> which I don't have time for, but that's what I want to do. So anyways, it's just sitting here in my basket. It looks nice just sitting in the corner too. So yep, it'll, it'll wait till I feel like working on it again. Um, another thing I'm working on is a sweater for Annie. And again, this was supposed to be done months ago. <laughs> but that's okay. Thankfully, this time I did a bigger size. So I'm knitting this cute little sweater. And it's called the Girls A-Line Jacket with Cabled Yoke. Uh, it's in this book. I think I've shown this book before. Uh, retro knits and it's by Sardar. This book I got at a where I used to live we had a knitting group and like once a year people would bring in stuff they didn't want anymore and they sell it really cheap and then the money would go to the guild for like rent and stuff so somebody had brought this in so I think I paid like a dollar for this book so that was good so anyways um, I really like this sweater too, so I can see that I'll probably knit it a couple times for Annie. So I haven't got very far on it, and then I kind of lost interest. I need to pick this up again, but I have the back done. So this, again, the color's off. It's darker. It's more rusty than orange, but it's pretty. So this is the back, and it has this pretty little detail on it. And a big hair. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think it's going to be really cute when it's done. And it did seem really big when I was knitting it. Like, it does seem really long for her. Now, by the time I get it done, it'll be perfect, I'm sure. But I think that's partly why I put it aside. And guess what yarn it is? <laughs> it's the Estelle Superwash DK again. This beautiful, rusty color. I wish it would show up better. It's much darker than it's appearing there. But it is a very nice color. And I don't normally like oranges and stuff, but this is a really nice color. And it's Q40311. 
and again this lovely Estelle yarn so yeah I'm working away on that so I'll have to get that back out again I think I started oh yeah I did I started one of the fronts or maybe I don't even know what this is <laughs> maybe it's a sleeve <laughs> I don't even know so anyways I need to figure out where I am oh no it's definitely a front it's got this cute little garter band at the bottom so yeah I need to work on that so yesterday I decided that I really needed a day of rest I have learned in 2020 that I am not good at resting. Um, yeah, I always feel like I have to be accomplishing things and yeah, not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> but anyways, yesterday I was feeling really tired and I thought, you know what? You need to rest. So I got up in the morning and I had a shower and I put on a clean pair of pajamas <laughs> and literally stayed in pajamas all day. Now, it was the perfect day for it because it had snowed in the morning and then it turned to freezing rain and then rain. So it was just a miserable day yesterday. And it was a great day to just stay home. So at first, I um, worked on those socks, these socks that I just finished. I did the toe on one of them. And then I was going to work on some more knitting, but I was already feeling restless <laughs> because, like I said, I'm not good at resting. So I decided I have a cabinet in my living room that I keep like patterns and needles and all my project bags and stuff in it. And when we moved, I unpacked everything into the cabinet, but I didn't really sort through it. I kind of just shoved it in there. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take some time and just organize what's in there, go through my patterns, see what I want to make in the next little while and see what's in my project bags that I forgot about <laughs> and and actually it wasn't nearly as bad as I anticipated so that was good but um I came across that sweater for Annie yesterday and thought I really do need to finish that um but really there's I think there's a sweater for myself which I I had not forgotten about that and um the snuggle is a real cowl and then there's a few pairs of socks, but the interesting thing is all the socks that I haven't finished are patterned socks. All the vanilla socks get finished. It's the patterned socks that don't. And it's not that they're hard or anything. I think I just really love the mindless knitting of a vanilla sock. So as much as I like patterned socks, I think, yeah, the plain vanilla ones are really more my more what I enjoy knitting I guess and it's you know it's kind of a shame because some of the pattern socks are beautiful but I just don't seem to complete them as quickly as I do the vanilla socks so and I think too it's just good to have a vanilla sock on a needle all the time now I did find a pair of vanilla socks in a project bag that I had forgotten about and one of the socks is already finished so I need to get those going too so I can have another pair of socks. But anyways, at least now I know exactly what was on my needles and what needs to be finished and what can wait a little longer. <laughs> and I also went through my patterns to see some things that I want to knit on in the next, I don't know, six months or so. And so that was good. So now it's my cabinet's really organized and it's great. I'm very excited about it. And yeah, I'm usually really good at putting, like when I'm finished a project, I put my needles back in the drawer where I keep my needles and stuff. But during a move and everything, everything kind of just got, got disheveled a bit. So it's nice to have everything sort of organized and back to normal. So that's good. So I felt really good about that project. And I was able to find some yarn in my stash to do a sweater for Annie. And I have lots of sock yarn, so I definitely won't run out of projects. So that's good. Um, I guess the only other work in progress that I have that I'm actively going to work on. <laughs> uh, there's a few in my cabinet, but really, like I said, there wasn't as many as I, 
I thought I thought there'd be a lot more unfinished projects, but it's not that bad. And I was telling a friend yesterday that I really just I'm at the stage where I don't put pressure on myself when it comes to knitting. Knitting makes me happy, but if I have all these like, oh, I have to finish this right now, it's not going to be fun anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> I just work on things as I feel like it. And you know what? It'll get finished when it gets finished. <laughs> and you know what? If if it doesn't fit the person that it was intended for in the first place, it'll fit somebody. <laughs> so it's all good. <laughs> but knitting is supposed to be fun. So I'm going to make it fun. So I do have a pair of pattern socks on the needle. Now this pattern is super easy. So I'm not sure why I've let these sit. But anyways, these are the Red Robin socks by Curious Handmade, Helen Stewart. So as you can see there, they're done in two colors. I did it in one color, which I'm really happy with how they are turning out. Let me put it on a blocker for you. So these ones, I I knit the first sock really quickly. Actually, I knit, I knit this first sock while my house was for sale. <laughs> There's people walking past my house right now. Um, I knit the, this sock while my house was for sale, which, like my other house was for sale, which was a very stressful time. So maybe I have a mental block towards these socks or something. Anyways, there they are. And I think they're beautiful. I love them. I really need to finish the other sock. I love this color. This is totally my wheelhouse. So my friend Julia, she started dyeing yarn. And oh, you can't see this color either. It's much more pink. It's just like this rosy pink color. So pretty. Anyway, she started dyeing yarn a while ago. And this is one of her yarns. And her yarn company, actually first I'll show you the other sock. So I've gotten this far and I'm doing uh, Helen Stewart socks come in three sizes, small, medium, large, and I'm doing the medium, which is 64 stitches. So here is the other sock and it has this cute stitch marker, progress keeper on it, <laughs> little sock, so cute. Yeah, so I'm getting there. So I need to pull these out. Maybe tonight I'll work on these when I'm resting. So yeah, this is really nice yarn. So yeah, I was saying my friend Julia started dyeing yarn and this is hers. This was a one of a kind that she had when she first started. I'll show you her yarn company. It's the DeBoer Yarn Company. So she's in Ontario and I believe she sells, I'm trying to think if she's on Etsy. Hmm. I'm sure if you Google DeBoer Yarn Company, you would find it. Um, I do have a couple other skeins from her. That'll give you an idea of some of her colors. Um, and these are, I think, the, yeah, these ones are an 80% organic superwash wool and 20% nylon. So this one is called Bordeaux Cherry. That one's really showing up, very true to color. So as you can see, her colors are very nudey, sort of very different and then this one is called wine dark sea gorgeous oh so nice so nice so yeah if you want to check her out there's her label 
and you can follow her on Instagram as well. She has a lot of really nice colors, but as you can see, her aesthetic is just very moody, <laughs> would be my word, to describe her yarn. Very nice, just different, very different. So anyways, yeah, you can check her out on Instagram and yeah, she, maybe I need to cast these on. These are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe those will be next. So yeah, so that's what I'm working on. And really, um, I do want to finish the sweater that I had started for myself forever ago. It's a Trek sweater and I have the body knit up to the armholes and I have one sleeve knit. So I just kind of got to a standstill there. So I need to pull that out too because that would be pretty mindless knitting as well. And then the color work would be really fun. So yeah, maybe now that we're getting a little more settled, there'll be more time for crafting. So hopefully. Uh, there's only a couple other things that I wanted to share with you. Um, just a couple acquisitions. I haven't gotten much lately at all. <laughs> um, but I ha I did discover this adorable stitch marker uh, maker. So her name is Whimsy and Sassy. And I'll have to link her. Um, but she makes the cutest. I don't know if you can see the little whale and the little mushroom. She makes the cutest stitch markers. She's also in Ontario. And I find as, as a Canadian, there's a lot of beautiful stitch marker makers that are American. And for me, with the exchange on the dollar and the shipping to Canada, it's just not worth it. Even though I'd love to support those makers. So it's always nice to find a Canadian who is making just as cute of things. So look at the bunnies. So cute. So cute. And if you watch, if you follow her on Instagram, she often has sales. So I try to take advantage of her sales. Um, and then I have this one as well, which is a cat because I do love my cats. Little cat with a heart. That's so cute. Anyways, her stitch markers are adorable. I also purchased one that was a little white dog for a friend of mine because she sadly lost her little white dog a few months ago. So I got her a little stitch marker to help, help her remember her sweet baby that she lost. So um, yeah, she has some really, really cute stitch markers. And like I said, she has good sales at times. So I would definitely follow her on Instagram and watch for those sales. Uh, the only other thing I was going to show you is this bag that I also got for my birthday. And I thought you would all love it. <laughs> it is so cute. Knitting keeps me from unraveling. So true, isn't it? So true, especially in 2020. Anyways, it uh, my daughter had this made by somebody local to my new house. And it has like a nice long crossbody strap plus the nice leather handles. But this, so cute. So yeah, I need to get a project in here ready to go. So I'm excited about that. So that's about it for um, what I'm making <laughs> and what I've been working on. Um, hopefully, hopefully. It won't be so long till I podcast again, but I will give you a bit of a, a brief life update. <laughs> we can keep it brief. Um, it has been a year. So uh, everything started great in January. Um, my grandbaby was born in January, so that was fantastic. February and the beginning of March, I worked a lot at my uh, job in my where I used to live, um, I used to work for the school board and I worked a lot, too much really. And I was really burnt out at the beginning of uh, COVID. <laughs> 
then COVID hit and, you know, at first I was just so grateful in some ways that I actually had time to stop and rest because I was exhausted. And, um, anyways, not knowing (laughs) that I was going to be selling my house, I decided that, uh, in March and April, maybe even May, I can't remember now, that it would be a good time to do some renovations in my house because my old house was just, it was a beautiful house, but it was getting to that age where um, it just needed some work and needed some refreshing. So thankfully, in hindsight, thankfully I did all this work. Um, So I renovated the basement, I painted it all, I put in a new bathroom down there, like did a ton of stuff. I purged the house. I, my son-in-law built a new deck in the back. Again, not knowing (laughs) that I was going to be selling my house. And um, funny enough, somebody came when we were building the deck, we, we used to have like, um, interlocking in the back. And so we didn't need that anymore. So I had posted it on a local group where you can give stuff away. And I said, like, if anyone wants these patio stones, you can come and get them. They're for free. So this guy came to get them and he was a real estate agent. So this was in May, probably, or June. And he said, you know, you're not thinking of selling your house at all, are you? I'm like, oh, no, no. (laughs) I'm going to be here for a long time. (laughs) Uh, So little did I know. Mm. So um, anyways, put on the new deck. So I just worked really, really hard through months of COVID. Sorry, my eye is running. I'm tired today. So uh, anyways, then July came and my son-in-law and my daughter and my granddaughter um, lived really close to me. So in July, my son-in-law got a new job two and a half hours away and to say I was devastated (laughs) was an is an understatement I was so devastated and I know for some some people like two and a half hours is nothing it you know we're still in the same province we're still in the same country like I know in the grand scheme of things it wasn't it's not that bad but in my world it was that bad (laughs) so I The other thing is, as a single mom, um, I don't have a lot of support, but my daughter is a huge support and her husband, and she's really a dear, dear friend. And the thought of losing them uh, and not seeing them on a regular basis was devastating. So I had hard decisions I had to make. So I sought out some wise friends because, you know, in a moment like that, you feel like you're not thinking straight anymore. (laughs) And one of my friends said something very wise and she, she's not a single mom, but she does have a child with a disability, which I also have. And she said to me, you know what, Heather, sometimes you have to think outside the box and maybe this is the time that you need to do that. And she's like, maybe you need to think about going with them. And I was like, what? (laughs) Like, sell my house and move? Like, and anyways, um, then I, then came weeks, literally weeks of like, what do I do? Do I go? Do I stay? Do I like, what do I do? So I, I started making like the pros and cons lists and seeking out you know, wise advice. And I sought out some financial advice as well, because the city where I used to live is um, a lot more expensive to live than where I'm living now. And I owned a home there and um, it, you know, was it needed a lot of work, but was worth a lot because of the location. And you know, to buy a house, well, the house that I did buy is bigger than the house we had before. 
much nicer and much, much affordable, more affordable. So financially, it was a really good decision. Anyways, all that to say, it was really the hardest decision ever because it meant coming here meant I was leaving family behind. Uh, My parents and my one son are still there and that was devastating to leave them. Um, But I really, really did not want to miss out on being a grandmother. And I really felt that moving was going to um, reduce a lot of my stress, um, which it has. Um, And I just felt it was the best decision for myself and my two girls that are still living at home. So, um, so we did it. So (laughs) I got the house ready to sell. I had to hire a real estate agent, sell the house, travel back and forth to find a house, bought a house. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. And you know what? Like it doesn't maybe it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're on your own, it was a lot. It was really, really hard. And you know, I yeah. I'm I'm now I'm so grateful. So grateful that we're here. I love our new house so much. The community is great. It's beautiful here. We're two kilometers from the beach. <laughs> like we can get on our bikes and ride to the beach in the summer. It's amazing. And I'm so grateful to have my little granddaughter and you know, she brings me so much joy. I just could not imagine not being able to see her on a regular basis. Um, another really big pro of moving was um, I have a daughter with a disability and there's actually a college here that offers a program for uh, kids like her and so when the time's right she'll be able to go to that and that will help give her like skills that she can be employable at some point in her life so that is you know important and not an opportunity she would have had before So I'm really grateful for that as well. And um, yeah, it's just, in hindsight, it was, this was the best decision. This was the right decision. I'm grateful to be here, Um, but it was really hard (laughs) and I don't want to do that again. So uh, yeah, the stress was a little too much, but I had some really good friends who helped me um, you know, talked me through it, but, you know, I will say we didn't have a lot of physical help, which was hard. It was really hard. And, you know, I'll say, I know there's some single moms who watch this podcast and I'm just going to say, you know, sometimes we use sell ourselves short as single moms and we can do hard things. And if you're a single mom facing hard things, you can do it. You can do it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so that was my year. So then we moved November 10th and, um, sorry, there's a lot of distraction outside. Uh, we moved November 10th and, um, we got unpacked fairly quickly. We have, I think maybe five boxes left in the storage room that are not unpacked, but other than that, Everything was unpacked, and um, when we saw the house, we had seen it twice before we moved in, and I thought, I thought I liked the color of the house, <laughs> the, of the inside. The, so the main, so let me go back a bit. I bought a bungalow, and so on my main floor, I have um, my bedroom, a guest bedroom, my sewing room, and then the living room, dining room, kitchen. And then in the basement are more bedrooms and a full bathroom and another like big TV area and then storage areas. So my girls actually wanted to be downstairs. So their rooms are downstairs. They have their own bathroom, their own TV area. It's great. It's great. (laughs) So, but I bought a bungalow because 
um, I have really bad arthritis in my one knee and will actually need a knee replacement. Um, so this, this was a good move as well, just to have everything on one level. So anyways, uh, the whole main level had been professionally painted a couple of years ago. And, you know, when I saw it, I thought it was like this neutral sort of beigey color, but the more I lived in it, I realized it was sort of a neutrally color, but it had this sort of like an army green undertone to it. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't learn to love it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. And like my furniture didn't look right in the house. And like, it just, anyways, I decided to just pay somebody to come in and paint the whole thing, like the whole main floor. So they were supposed to start the end of the end of November and they were two weeks late starting. So they didn't finish painting until Tuesday afternoon before Christmas. <laughs> so, and that whole two weeks of them painting was just me moving furniture and I felt like I was moving again. I had to pack up everything in the closets and anyways, it was crazy. So anyways, now it's all painted and all the furniture's put back where it belongs. So now we can really settle in and start putting things on the walls and start making it more home. So I'm glad that's over, but because of all that, we didn't have a Christmas tree. We had no baking, we had nothing. But anyways, we made the best of it and it was fine. But yeah, I'm ready to rest <laughs> and uh, just really get settled. I feel like the sewing room is the only place that's really finished. Everything else just is kind of getting there. So anyways, that's a very long life update, I guess, but and probably stuff you didn't really want to know. But anyways, we're in our new city now and we do love it and we miss our family at home or in the other city. But uh, we're making the best of it. And uh, we're in Ontario, so we are now in lockdown for who knows how long. <laughs> it's supposed to be the end of January, but we shall see. And just another thing of 2020, my kids went to school for a month <laughs> this year. Well, since March, they started their new school here on the 17th of November and their last day was the 18th of December. <laughs> so that cuts into my free time too. But anyways, hopefully 2021 is going to be better. And, uh, you know, it can't be much worse, right? <laughs> but the vaccine's here and hopefully that's going to start making a big difference. And yeah, we all just do our part and stay home for a while. Hopefully things will get better. Anyways, thanks for joining me today and I will see you on Instagram soon. I have some fun projects planned that hopefully I'll be able to share with you there. And yeah, so follow me on Instagram and you can follow me here and happy new year and all the best for 2021. Stay healthy, stay safe. Stay home if you can. And uh, yeah, just stay home and knit. <laughs> uh, at least we have our knitting. Uh, anyways, happy new year. And I will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye.